both once again. Thank you for coming. Is this you do? Can you hear the sound? Yes, I can hear it. Okay. So uh, I hope you had a pleasant and relaxing uh, spring break. And uh, we have uh, completed the half of our course. So um, we can uh, symbolically split the course onto four parts. So the separation of, uh, of Born and Oppenheimer, of nuclear and electronic degrees of freedom. Then uh, second chapter, uh, the artifact theory. Then the third chapter is density functional theory. And then uh, chapter number four is time dependent density functional theory, which is, sounds similar, but it is very, very different thing. So, uh, we are trying to get some basic understanding of how computer codes are working and practical skills to apply those uh, knowledge and skills to research, including experimental research. And um, is hoping that you are supporting this idea. We can keep our initiative to complete each month is a session of uh, oral presentations. So uh, if you like this idea, we can keep going. And at the end of this month, maybe first Thursday of next month, do another session of uh, presentations where we will share uh, skills in uh, VASP software. So it is a um, software piece that we are going to learn during practical sessions in uh, basements of arts and science. And I think we have uh, about three weeks to accumulate some skills and knowledge and then share what, what we get. So um, do you feel that you are happy and uh, in time with uh, completing homework six? Yes. So uh, we should be establish fair rules for everyone. And uh, if there is a demand from the community, uh, we can uh, set up a little extension of the, uh, of the deadline. It not, not very long, maybe until the end of this week. So that hmm? tomorrow. <laughs> let's, let's talk more uh, today in, in the lab. Like, uh, hmm? Oh, well, I have recorded your opinion that you want to s submit it earlier, but if everyone else, everyone else to want it later, okay, <laughs> okay. So I think uh, who do not want an extension. <laughs> okay, so let's Thursday night or Friday night? But please try to complete it uh, before this time bec because uh, later we will need to focus on other piece of software and it, it will be just too hard to keep everything in, in, in the head. So complete and forget. Well, not forget, but <laughs> leave for later. And actually, the skills that you are getting, uh, you have already got in uh, Gaussian are already enough to uh, support your research and uh, do some uh, good 30% of research paper in uh, these computational procedures. It is al already something. You already are holders of valuable skills. So um, last time we have accumulated the matrix form of Hartree-Fock equation, and uh, we are setting up a goal for the month to uh, get understanding of density functional theory from the methodological part and uh, learn how to 
utilize how to use uh, WASP software from the practical side. So we are not going to actually study DFT today. We will be making a transition from concepts of uh, artifact to concepts of, of density functional. So we are going very uh, slow transition and uh, the subjects that we are going to cover today can be related to both uh, theories. Okay. There is another little thing that um, will be in here to mention. We will also briefly look on um, properties of periodic solids. So uh, by now we were thinking about molecules, small molecules or big molecules. And we were speaking about possibility of uh, materials being big, long, extended, periodic, but we were uh, not focusing on uh, whether this property brings any influence on the electronic structure. And we should uh, just make a little remark about it and expect something new when we will be exploring the new piece of software which is designed to address semiconductors and big uh, uh, chunks of uh, solid. OK, so let's um, try to remember how hard refoc is working, just to memorize what we were doing uh, before the spring break. And uh, I think it is one of the assignments in the homework. So at the end, we are expecting total energy and some observables. So at the beginning, we are starting with uh, setting up positions of all ions, all atoms that uh, compose the molecule. And we do have something cyclic in between. We have something uh, uh, SCF, self-consistent field update of something. So uh, we are starting with the gas. Or molecular orbitals. And then, using the guess of uh, for molecular orbitals, we are building our Fock metric. Which is uh, one electron operator that um, takes into account the ground feel of the rest of electrons. If you want, we can put uh, in some uh, equations how this fork metric uh, composed. And an important property is that it does include the information about molecular orbitals. So fork matrix depends on uh, how molecular orbitals are composed out of atomic orbitals. And this fork matrix is uh, diagonalized. One is uh, can talk about this applies it to uh, expansion coefficients, vector of expansion coefficients for molecular orbitals. And getting set of energies is overlap greater and set of uh, coefficients for molecular orbitals. And then uh, I'm skipping a couple of uh, blocks. 
one does compose a Slater determinant out of all occupied orbitals and uh, uses the specific procedure to find total energy out of this multi-electron wave function. And this total energy energy at given iteration iteration uh, plus, plus one is compared with total energy at previous iteration. Well, if we do only single pass, it is not working. We need uh, to do it at least uh, two passes through the whole procedure. And one expects that it will be smaller than tolerance limit. So if it is smaller than uh, tolerance limit, then uh, one records the total energy and observables uh, as the outcome. And if uh, it gives no, then uh, one uses the new molecular orbitals, <coughs> new molecular orbitals, to build again Fock matrix and repeat the whole procedure. The procedure is repeated until this uh, condition is fulfilled. Let's check uh, whether we were doing right thing in uh, today. Let's compare our knowledge with Wikipedia. Oh no, not with Wikipedia. Was what I was doing. Oh, so here is the um, just same words: position of finance, initial guess, equation for self-consistent field. And here are the terms that enter the Fock matrix. So, kinetic energy of electron interaction is. Uh, nucleus and two terms for electron-electron interaction, relation and exchange. Um, okay, so we are ready to say goodbye to Hartree Fock. At least we have some uh, understanding what it is and how it uh, does work. I'm going to the next slide. So. In case everything goes very positively, very successful, then one may want to compute observables to predict properties of, of materials. And one should focus on some observables that, uh, on one hand, do make sense for experimental part. On other hand, uh, one probably should start with something uh, which is a little easier to work with. And uh, we will do a little touch of two types of observables. Uh, the ability of material to interact with light, and we are not going to cover it in full, we just touch it. And then uh, I don't know how to stop. <laughs> um, second, um, we should touch the subject of whether we can um, use our hard fork calculations and later density functional theory calculations to estimate uh, ionization energy and affinity energy, something that one can experimentally take from uh, electrochemistry. So, So, um, what is light? What is uh, optical? Uh, what are optical experiments? Why they are important and what uh, can be taken into account? So, the light is uh, periodic uh, oscillations of uh, electromagnetic field that is. Um, propagating in time and space, right? And uh, it is 
interconnected electric and magnetic fields. When uh, there is a change in uh, electric field, when it changes in, in time, it does induce change in magnetic field. And when magnetic field is changing in, in time, it induces changes of electric field. And these two things, they do not need any actual material. They can propagate in vacuum. And one contracts, another expands. Another contracts, one expands, and they go this way. And they can uh, propagate and exist forever, like light uh, signal from far stars. And the simplest form of uh, electromagnetic wave is a, a so -called plane wave. Select some uh, axis application. Then, uh, in the simplest configuration, direction of electric and magnetic field are orthogonal to each other. But, uh, let's say this will be electric. And uh, if we go in space, but it is always parallel to a selected axis. And uh, the magnetic field is uh, coexisting at the same time the same point of space, but it is uh, in the simplest configuration uh, is uh, orthogonal to the orientation of, of, of electric field. And uh, in order for this configuration to exist forever, it cannot be standing. It must change in time. So this whole thing is traveling, is propagating. And uh, for most of our time, we are solving Schrodinger equations. This, which gives uh, waves of electrons. This one is a solution of Maxwell equation, which gives waves of uh, electric and magnetic field. So those um shapes are also changing in time in such way that uh, they are traveling and the electric component of the electromagnetic field makes the strongest effect on uh, materials and therefore we are going to focus on it at most so if we want to mathematically represent the traveling the electric component of traveling wave uh, we are we do prefer exponential instead of uh, sine and cosine just because it is uh, easier to differentiate and integrate and uh, here we have the vector k the direction of propagation of wave then uh, position in space propagation direction this is position this is uh, frequency and this is time so uh, if we want to play a little with this construction we can uh, notify that there is a such uh, areas of space such surfaces when the kr is equal to omega t so it is the <coughs> wave front where the phase contributed by space and uh, time contributions are equal and it corresponds that wave is uh,
accumulating phase and moving in this direction. So this front is approaching us or going from us. It means that light is uh, propagating in a given direction. So what is the relation of this thing uh, with materials? Because we are interested in materials, molecules and uh, pieces of uh, solids. So if we do have an electric field and uh, an electric charge, then in simplest classical mechanics, electric field induces displacement of charge. It uh, imposes a force that uh, makes a shift, makes a change of, of position. In case we are looking on quantized electron, then uh, in some uh, in molecule, then periodic electric field may induce change of electronic state. And this is a problem that uh, we are going to study maybe a, a little bit more than a month ago in the uh, last chapter of our course. But now we are going to touch it quickly. So um, if you do have this electric field, if you do have a, a molecule over here, Then uh, the distance, the period, half period, of the electric field is typically about, uh, for optical uh, signal, it is about 700 nanometers. And molecules are of the size of one nanometer. So those space distribution is not very important for molecule. It doesn't feel the gradient of, of the um, electric field. So for for a molecule, one can say that uh, electric field is just oscillating in time. Any physical effect is important only if one can determine an energy that this effect is contributing to the uh, total operator of energy to the Hamiltonian. And for interaction between matter and uh, electric field, there is such term. So interaction, interaction term in the Hamiltonian. So if you have a non-interacting Hamiltonian, then the Hamiltonian that includes interaction with electric field will be type of operator times uh, electric field. So in um, classical limit without any quantization, it means that if one has a dipole, two charges and electric field, then the dipole is going to rotate and align with the field. Same as compass. Compass a little, a little bit more complicated is for magnetic field. So it is, so to say, of compass. And those are vectors. They have uh, direction. Electric, electric, electric field and a molecule that do have a dipole moment. And because of this motivation for, uh, for us as uh, making our steps in the computational chemistry, we have a task computing dipole moment. If you have an electronic state of a, of a molecule, we may want to compute dipole moments of this molecule. Or if it is irradiated by high frequency, oscillating light, then transition dipole moment. Little goal, tactical goal, or whatever community demand. Okay, so here is this Hamiltonian, and the uh, dipole is uh, change of position times charge. We can generally say that is summation of uh, all ions <coughs> is uh, positive charge, and summation of all uh, position of electrons is negative charge. But 
this is uh, an operator. If you want to compare our results to a real world, we need a number. Number meaning that it is observable, metric settlement of value. So we need to compute, we need to think about if we can compute metric elements of uh, this uh, operator. We need to go from operator to metric element. And then if you have metric element, we have a contribution to the total energy and uh, there is a more or less clear way what to do further. So the technical challenge is to compute this uh, um, matrix element and later it is connected to observer. So, yes, yes? Oh. All electrons. O where, where do we have one electron? We have many electrons. In your, in all molecules except uh, H2 plus, there are more than one electron. Here, I summation of electrons. I'm just uh, skipping the uh, values. I equal equal from one to I equals the number of electrons. Here we do have a, a little challenge, just a uh, challenge, men mental challenge to understand what we are doing. We have found set of one electron molecular orbital, and we can draw them, we can understand what they are, but then we have a slater determinant construction of many of those with some uh, anti-symmetry properties, which uh, may be a nice concept uh, if written as a formula, but uh, I cannot imagine how it looks in space because it is really multidimensional object. But we need to find a matrix element of a uh, multidimensional operator in the uh, connection with uh, this multidimensional wa wave function. Is it possible to analyze it? Is it, pos is it, is it really something uh, terrible, something uh, really hard? Or maybe if computing those uh, matrix elements life becomes a little easier. So we do have not South Dakota, so later determinant, many electrons, and then we have type of operator. And uh, I feel scared when I see this because uh, I realize that uh, later determinant means something very uh, big multidimensional object. And maybe as, a, as an example, uh, we can replace Slater determinant with uh, R3 product. Product is not uh, Hewlett, but R3 product. So we are going to uh, for, uh, take just two electrons. And uh, as our multidimensional wave function, one or two, we're going to take I one position one, I two position two. And then uh, if we are making a little mathematical experiment with just two electrons, then the we can for for a time forget about position of ions thinking that they do not bring anything interesting and say that our dipole uh, operator is just summation of position of electron 1 and electron 2. We're just going to inspect whether it is something that we can treat, whether we can uh, uh, write a code, whether it is possible to process by a human being, 
or it is something um, too much complicated. And, uh, let's be brave and consider right away consider two states. Ground state when uh, we have um, first and second orbital occupied and um, first excited state when the um, electron is promoted from the second orbital to the third one. Here is our dipole operator and here is what we are going to compute. So we have matrix element of the dipole connecting ground state and excited state. And it is uh, very approximated, very imprecise. We remove all anti-symmetry properties just to save space in writing and see whether we can uh, process at least this simple example. So <coughs> we do have product of uh, bra, part of our multi-electron wave function. We have a cat on the right, and we have our operator. And we need to integrate it twice over two variables. Let's just try to exercise what do we see. Well, um, we do have a plus sign. And plus uh, sign under integration can bring us to two terms, right? So it will be same bra times R1, same cat. Plus same bra times R2, same cat. Okay, here it is. Uh, let's make our life a little easier. So this is our bra, our ground state. This is our cat, our excited state. We have R1, position of first electron between them. And this is term number one. Then uh, we have a second term, also which has uh, in bra, in F, and the second electron between them. So, this also so um, we have probably in each term, we can reshuffle the order of uh, factors so that uh, we can factorize everything that relates to R1 as one factor, everything that relates to R2 as a second factor. For the first term, the first factor for the first term will be integration. This function, this uh, remain uh, part of the operator, and this part of, of the cat. And we are expecting that there will be total four. Ah, oh, no, no, no. Here I'm wrong. There will be four um, components, but it is uh, still they are added together. So 
two factors in the uh, first term and two factors in the second term. And what is interesting in this um, is our first term. We have our R1 position of the first electron only once. So if we are processing the second factor that depends on R2, it does not have the R operator in here. And this gives us uh, some hope that uh, things are much easier than uh, we originally thought. Uh, this factor that depends on R2 doesn't contain any operators. So there are some uh, molecular orbitals. There is an integration of those. And we do know that uh, our molecular orbitals were designed in such a way that they are orthogonal to each other. So that uh, integration of two molecular orbitals gives a delta function. So it means that uh, this term can be simplified, this factor in this term can be simplified really quick. And the only non-trivial part comes from here. And same thing for the, for the second term. So we do have So I'm rewriting the same construction as I used for the first term, but I'm replacing the uh, operator from the first factor to the second factor. So here we do have an operator, non-trivial operator in the second factor, but the first factor that depends on uh, uh, R1 integration also can be converted into delta function according to orthogonality. And we can uh, write it right away here. So this one will be delta of to three and this and we know that delta to three will be zero. This will be delta one one, which will be one. So I don't know how to summarize it. In the products in the wave functions of uh, multi electron systems, in multi electron wave functions the procedure of taking matrix elements often factorizes most of, of, of the part of this wave function, most of the dependencies of the rest of electron, just as a contraction that brings us delta function. So most of the properties do depend only on properties of single orbital. So what we, what we discovered here, that uh, many factors can be omitted So 
So if it is really so, here we are not going to prove anything. We are just showing one example, one uh, case study. But if it is really so, then our life is a little bit easier than uh, we originally thought. Then our molecular orbitals, which were never promised as being something real, they are just mathematical constructions, but it turns like the properties of molecular orbitals can really help us to understand uh, absorbables properties of, of real materials. Maybe not in the most exact form, but they are related. They, although they are not um, proved to be anything one can see in experiment, they really help analyzing qualitative pictures. Let's uh, go forward. And it is just the same thing. So R1 in the first term in the second term. And here we have this uh, matrix element of uh, operator R, one electron position between uh, states 1 and 1. And here times uh, delta to 3, which is 0, so it means that the first term is 0. And then uh, the delta function 1, 1, which, which equals 1 times matrix element of position operator between single electron molecular orbitals. Later. It gives us a um, value that molecular orbitals can be helpful in uh, understanding some properties. And maybe we can uh, develop a limited optimism that maybe this is correct not only for dipoles and optical properties. Maybe there is some more generality that uh, multi-electron observables can be represented or estimated in terms of one electron matrix element. At least we should keep this in mind and uh, try it all the time if we can learn something new analyzing single uh, electron molecular orbit. With understanding that it is an approximation, it is only part of the big picture, but in some cases it gets uh, a really simple and helpful approach. Before we dismiss the class, we will try to apply the same concept to analyzing the ionization energy and uh, electron affinity. We will also try to think whether this multi-electron properties can be approximately analyzed based on single orbital property. But um, before we go to this section, I would like to quickly touch the subject of periodic solids and block waves. So um, the property of solids is that ions are set up in a very regular lattice. So if you know the positions of uh, maybe one or two ions, then we can predict the position of all other ions. Like uh, this R3 will be equal to vector R1 plus this uh, displacement vector. Then uh, the position of uh, ion R4 will be equal same as R1. One plus two times this displacement vector. So there is a displacement 
vectors that establish periodicity. So if we translate by a specific uh, amount, we reproduce the same configuration, the same lattice. So it is the main uh, property of, of solids. Uh, I may say that it is a definition of solids. This uh, gentleman was contributing to electronic structure of solids. I was lazy to uh, copy paste his biography. So he came from uh, whatever Switzerland to the States in 35, 34, and then was jumping between several major universities and making a famous contribution in all of them. But actually, he uh, he's known for at least two contributions that are known to me. The one is related to electron waves in solids that we are going to touch right now. And second, um, he was looking on the changing of electronic state for two-level system in application to nuclear magnetic resonance and uh, in about mid-40s. But later, um, Several researchers realized that those equations are uh, so nice and universal that they can be applied to any system that has several electronic states that are periodically changing their configuration in time. So uh, the first concept for solids is block wave, and the one that for changing of electronic state is block equation, so optical NMR block equation or optical block equation. So this little formula replicates the same thing that we were drawing on the previous slide. That uh, position of ion in the um, another unit cell is the same as the position of ion in the original unit cell plus translation vector. Uh, let me jump back to the previous slide and make a little addition to the sketch. So here we are considering this configuration as something that is repeating again and again. And the minimal configuration that is repeating again and again is often re uh, referred to as unit cell. I'm going one slide forward. So in case the ions are arranged in such a periodic way, then the force or potential that is experienced by electrons is also arranged in such periodic way. So if we have one coordinate, we have positions of uh, ions. One dimension. Then the potential, which is typically attractive near the ions, you look in the same way near each ion. So the, this will be V and capital E lowercase. The potential of interaction between nucleus and electrons. So those are position of ions, and now we can imagine that our electron is as far as distance r lowercase. Then the potential that electron is experiencing here, this r, will be the same as the potential that electron is experiencing at position r. And the same as electron is experiencing at position R plus 2A. Which means that if 
ions are arranged in a periodic way, then potential that acts on electrons is also periodic. Okay. Well, if for a very short time we forget about uh, all ions except on the single one, a single ion and forget about what is around, there should be something like uh, similar to hydrogen orbitals. The electron should take some um, electronic states that maybe composed of uh, hydrogen orbitals and near the ion they should establish this uh, SPD orbital progression and if uh, it is a material made of the same element this configuration should approximately repeat near each ion Let's, uh, draw we do not know what, what it is far apart from ion but near ion it can be some something like P function or maybe S function with a peak here and uh, near another ion is the same primitive background um, basis wave function. It is not uh, eigenstate, it is just something that uh, we can guess for a single ion. But now, those are um, wave functions in vicinity of ion. But since those ions are very close to each other, we may want to establish connection, whether those shapes in the nearest ions uh, are connected to each other, and if they are connected, in which way. And the very simple formula that I'm going to show in the next slide was developed by this gentleman. So his idea that he uh, later proved in a uh, rigorous way, that one should combine two concepts. One concept of uh, electronic wave functions forming um, shapes around center of attraction, around ions. And second concept, that in uh, empty space, electrons are traveling as plane waves. So we do have atomic-like functions and we have plane waves. The simplest thing one can do with them is either add or multiply. So this gentleman suggested to multiply them. And uh, so he takes here, he takes uh, these atomic-like functions on each center, on each ion, but then they are getting different phase factors. And if one combines together this atomic-like behavior and plane wave behavior of accumulating phase as moving forward in space, it turns out to be very beneficial, helpful concept that describes the realistic world. So uh, this is uh, electronic function near ion, and uh, this adding together, adding the translation vector shows that uh, this function near one ion is the same as a wave function uh, near another ion. So by translating vector, we translating by a vector, 
n times, we get the same function. Then one can introduce the plane wave that uh, changes phase as one moves uh, in space. And uh, if one multiplies these two things, it turns out that the eigenstates of electrons in solids always obey this uh, rule. They combine uh, atomic centered approach and plane wave uh, traveling wave approach. And I'm going to finish this subject right now. Maybe we will uh, touch it in more details later. Okay, so uh, let's focus again on the uh, subject that we started with. So, can we utilize properties extracted from one electron molecular orbitals to characterize many electron objects that uh, formally are characterized by many electron wave functions. And we are going to apply, uh, make a humble attempt to apply this concept to ionization energy and electron affinity. So if we inspect Hartree Fox theory in uh, much more details, well, not in much more details, we already have it. If we um, make an exercise and uh, connect Slater determinant operators of uh, all, all four components of energies that enter into total energy and uh, the molecular orbitals, then the total energy can be expressed uh, as a summation of um, single electron uh, contributions plus uh, those um, Ohm and exchange terms which uh, are contributed as matrix elements between each pair of orbitals that are occupied. There is a way to compute total energy in Hartree Fox theory to count all pairs of orbitals and uh, get a matrix element of, of interactions between those orbitals. And uh, adding those together will uh, provide a total energy. So this complicated term related to uh, multi-electron integrals is often important. And uh, it was a big development of theory to uh, explain it and find this form. But for some cases, some limiting cases, um, as a very strong and not very reliable approximation, one can uh, try to neglect those terms. And uh, justification of this, um, this thing is that if our material has a very big dielectric constant or it is immersed in a material that high, has high dielectric constant, for example, it is just uh, um, immersed in water, or it is a um, metal where all electrons around our small fragment that we are looking at are quickly rearranging and compensating any electric field, then an attempt of any objects to experience electrostatic force between them will be damped very quickly. If there is a um, screening effect, if there is a big dielectric constant, in some cases, um, those multi-electron effects are of secondary importance. Another example that I do not fully understand, but I just uh, heard from reading, are molecules 
aromatic molecules with conjugated bonds. By some reason, I should learn by why, they can be explained really well by neglecting, by forgetting about those uh, lump and exchange terms. And this was uh, utilized in so-called Huckel theory that uh, develops properties of uh, aromatic uh, organic molecules just based on uh, single electron orbitals. So if we provide justification of temporarily forgetting those things, then the total energy of our multi-electron system can be composed as summation of eigen energies of molecular orbital. So generally, it is not correct. We cannot uh, go to the public place and say energy of multi-electron system is a summation of contributions from individual electrons. This is not right. But as an approximation, as a qualitative analysis, sometimes it gets uh, helpful and, and beneficial. So by writing this formula, one should always mark that it is approximation. And those uh, energies of orbitals, orbitals can be obtained by hartree fox theory or several other theories that are based on the concept of molecular orbitals. So in practical applications, sometimes it is interesting and helpful to ionize a material, ionize a molecule, to add or remove an electron. And this property and ability of uh, a material to allow someone or somewhat some reason some uh, neighboring uh, object to take or bring an extra electron can be characterized by ionization energy and affinity energy electron affinity and um, here is how we can treat it in an approximate way so in case we do change In case our model is, our system is neutral, then we have uh, n electrons. If we bring an additional electron, we have uh, n plus one electrons. If you have, uh, it's negative charge. If we remove an electron, it gets uh, plus one charge, and it gets n minus one electron. And if we uh, use this diagram to show the occupation of orbitals by electrons, you can see that here we have all in place. Here we add one on the next available orbital. And here we have removed one from the uh, highest occupied. So in a precise, exact way, one should uh, describe the situation by computing total energy for three models, where one modifies the total number of electrons. But if one needs a quick analysis, one can use this approximation of neglecting electron-electron uh, interaction and uh, write down the total energy of uh, neutral um, negatively charged and positively charged model as a summation of energies of all orbitals here. And uh, if it is uh, ionized, one make a summation of 
all but one orbital, and here one makes summation all plus one orbital energies. And uh, subtracting those values within this approximation, if we subtract uh, this one and this one, we are going to get only the energy of the uh, last orbital. So if we subtract, then uh, all those will cancel. Right? If we uh, subtract these two, then we will get a uh, subtraction of everything except this one. And this little observation that uh, change in total energy is related to the molecular orbital energy of uh, highest occupied and highest unoccupied orbitals is uh, referred to as Koopman theorem. And uh, it was um, mentioned in the uh, 30s and uh, is a part of uh, uh, common belief in the community that approximately energy required to add or remove an electron can be estimated by looking on the single electron energy of a uh, highest occupied and uh, lowest unoccupied molecular orbital. In the more exact calculations, they get um, some corrections, but in uh, broad range of materials, this uh, gives a reliable estimation of, of properties. Okay. And this is a question that probably we can put as a little verbal question in, into next homework, how the sign of the uh, ionization energy relates to chemical stability of a, of a molecule. So with this, I would like to end our meeting and uh, kindly invite you to the lab tonight at 6 p.m. in the arts and science basement, room number 16. Okay, thank you. I'm ready to answer any questions. And if you do not have questions, meeting is dismissed. You are free to, to go. Gracias.